Welcome to Kitagi Karama, podcast number three. Um, we're here today in the studio. Um, as we promised, we're going to run a couple of the small uh, pedal board size amps um, against the drummer. Ian's playing drums today. You're out of shot. There we go. <laughs> and uh, we're going to see how they compete. We've got a, uh, a DB level, a DB level here, um, which uh, should enable you to keep an eye on how loud we are. Um, and we're going to run down on these amps. So we've got the uh, Baby Bomb by Moore, which is a 30 watt digital amp. We've got a uh, Power Stage 170 by Seymour Duncan, 170 watts. Um, and we've got also the Blue Guitar Blue Guitar One amp pedal, which is 100 watts, um, but running a, a valve, a nano valve? A nano valve, I think. Nano valve, I think it is, yeah. And we're recording with a Zoom HD4 mobile recorder. H4N. H4N, sorry. And um, it's just a room monitor. Yeah. So no close mic in. We just want to get an idea of what, what a gigable volume would be. So we said we're going to call this episode, Can You Gig It? Yeah, yeah. Or Will It Gig or something like gig. that. Will It Gig, okay, cool. So um, we've also got a variety of speaker cabs. So as we go through, I will shout out what's running through what and what the levels are. And I'll put some information up in the comments below as well about the setups, um, show you some pictures, etc. Cool, let's get on with it. So, first things first, we're running the line six um, as the preamp for this. Um, and uh, I'm going to try and keep out of the way so you don't necessarily need to see me. Um, currently, we're just running clean with some nice uh, reverb effects on there so you can get a nice sparkly clean. I'm running straight into the moor. Uh, until a baby bomb and it's currently on quarter volume on the warm setting and we're running into this blue 1x12 Switch onto the bright setting on the moor and just give you a listen to that. Okay, so that's on quarter on the moor. I'm just going to crank it a bit louder and see where the breakout point is where it no longer sounds clean. third setting before the speaker starts to break up. Now whether it's the speaker or the amp, uh, we'll test that later by running into a 100 watt 4x12 as well. Um, just for comparison's sake, I'm going to turn this back down to a quarter and I'm going to run it into um, two 1x12s in a series mode. Let's just talk about impressions. There's a definite difference 
in the sound, right? I can Between hear. the two yes. speakers of a single speaker. Yeah, that's that's and more you wider, that. fuller, doesn't seem to be as if it's driving as hard. Yeah, I agree with you, yeah. Okay. So now I'm gonna crank it again and see if it still breaks up in the same place. So Let's go very clean with the two speakers. So um, that was running at half, and um, it was still uh, clean enough. Anything past that, it started to break up. Uh, again, I'm not sure if it's the amp or the speakers, but we, uh... could you gig it? Let's get in close and talk about it. Okay. Hello. Okay, so there's two things there. Well, you heard the same little Moor baby, baby bomb. bomb running through one 1x12 and then two 1x12s in series. Mm -hmm. The two in series with the Moor on about, what, half? Um, uh, when I just played it at a maximum, yeah. Right, was more than loud enough for any pub gig you would play or anything. I'm sure, definitely, you could gig it, which is ridiculous considering the amp is about that big. Okay, the power supply is about that big, but it's <laughs> it's tiny, you know. Yeah. Anything to add? Yeah. Um, no, actually, no. You're okay. Right. Yeah. Can sure. we gig it? Yeah. Yes, you can gig that. Easy. Yeah, you can gig yes. that. No problem. Now, as for how clean it's going to be, I'd like to hear it like just with no effects on it. Just uh, try Straight and get in. as crystal clean as you can, and okay. see how loud that will go. I'm going to just run straight in then, straight into the, the power. Up. Okay, so this is the Moore Baby Bomb. Running straight in uh, from a guitar, no preamp, no effects. Okay. Not really loud enough, I'll crank it to a third. Okay, um, a half, half volume on the baby bump. We're still on the bright setting at the moment. Three quarters volume. Okay, fairly clean. Mm -hmm. Maxed out. That's good. I need a break up when it's at full volume. Um, personally, I think it needs a preamp to push it to give it some warmth, but it sounds pretty nice. Can I just say that we, I think we've inadvertently written the incidental music to an 80s uh, cop drama, maybe.
That's what I need to. That's what you want to play some guitar and ukulele. Yeah, it does. I've no idea what I'm playing. I just thought I'd play something sounding nice with some reverb. So. Just stopping and starting it like that. It feels like a like a you know incidental like when you cut to commercial on an eighties kind of drama. <laughs> Righto. Okay, that's full volume. That baby bomb stays pretty pretty clean. pretty clean. Pretty clean for a tiny little amp. It's, it's maybe not my favourite clean sound I've ever heard. It's not bad though, right? It's not bad it's either, straight but, in. you know, it's it's not got any of the sort of warmth of a, of a vintage Fender or anything like that, but mm -hmm. you're talking about the smallest possible amp you could have, and definitely it's got enough, um, yeah, it's, got, it's, it's loud enough, yeah. for sure. And you, you would never really plug straight into that, you would always run some kind of mm -hmm. preamp or effects into it, so from that point of view, yeah, yeah, it's really Great. good, really good. All right, what are we going to try now? Uh, we'll do the same with the, the Seymour Duncan. Okay, so this is the Seymour Duncan, what's it called? Uh, well, Power Stage 170. Power Stage 170. So this amp has its own um, EQ on it, uh, bass, middle, treble, which I'll keep flat for the, for the test here for now. Um, and we're going to run through the effects again. So, well, you're going to keep it at 12 o'clock, you mean? Uh, the, the EQ, yeah, all, yeah. The, okay. all at zero, uh, so no cut and no, um, no boost. So this is a quarter volume on the power stage on the 17. <laughs> quarter volume is not loud enough. So I'm going to go to a third. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so are you running straight into that now? No, this is effects again. Through the effects. Okay. Yeah, through the effects. Okay. So this is what half, half now again. Smooth, but, though. Yeah, it's, it, you can hear more of the character of the preamp. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Um, okay, gonna crack it to three quarters now. Right, so it's got some noticeable noise, but not too bad, I guess. No, it's fine. Try again. That's loud enough for me, um, and it's still clean at three quarters, so I'm going to just dime it. Yeah, yeah, same test as the other one, I guess. 
It's running a hundred, is it? That's a hundred percent. Right, okay. Interesting. Of the EQ, like try taking the middle output, some of the bass and treble. I'm gonna actually punch the middle, okay. uh, just to kind of boost those peaks and all take right, the bass down. All right, exactly the opposite of oh, what well. I just said. <laughs> now, all right, I'll do what you said, and then I'll do what I say. <laughs> so I'm gonna drop the middle out. I'm gonna roll the bass and treble up. Okay. Other way around, I'm going to boost the uh, mids and drop the bass down. So it's still very clean, there's a little bit of break up on it, but... better tone definitely has a better tone it's not as loud weirdly weirdly but it's loud enough yeah you can gig it yes definitely you've got you've got a lot more control there with that EQ I, I quite like that sound just pushing the bass and the treble and cutting some of the mid that actually sounds, sounds nicer mid. and it cuts more with a mid I think, as you expect for a lead tone yeah so. but all you would want with that is maybe a little bit of reverb and that would be a perfectly decent clean Mm. Channel. Yeah, I agree. Something to think about. Ah, oh, no, before you go, what? If you were to take one to a gig out of those two, which one so far? I would take the Seaball. Good. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Okay, Blue Star oh. Amp 1, running to the effects return. Um, we can only use um, one speaker because of the ohmage complications on it. The Blue has two outs rather than a uh, automatic uh, attenuation. Yeah, which the other two amps do. So uh, we're running eight ohms out into one of the blue wall bottles. Okay. to a third now. Well, we're going to go up to a half. to uh, three quarters. That's really breaking up, that's really clipping. I'm not sure if it's because we're running the one speaker. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, we'll do a, um, a direct in first, and then on this setting, we'll plug it into the 100 watt um, cab. We'll see if it still breaks up, and we'll see if it's the amp or the cab at that one. Now, to be fair, this is the only amp that is valve in the preamp, isn't it? Is it the preamp or the power amp in this? I'm not sure, to be honest. Oh, okay. Um. Right, so we'll do straight in. Of course, yeah. That's not that much, so we'll, we'll go straight to a half from there. It's 
really trying to sound like incidental music now. Uh, um, it's on the edge of loud enough, I think. But I think because it's not drive driven at this level, it shows that it potentially is the valve that's overdriving when we get louder. Three quarters. A 200 watt cab. So we're back in with the effects now, and we're going to go straight to the three quarters mark and see if it still distorts. So I'm just going to dial it back a bit. Okay. So I you try dialing back the helix a little bit. Okay. Dialing that back. Helix has always been on a half uh, on the uh, output volume. seem that the, uh, the amp itself does um, go into overdrive when it's being pushed hard from the other end, it's not the speaker that's being driven at that point, which is useful. You, you, you've got to bear in mind that the, the blue, would, would not, I don't think anyone would ever try and sell it to you as a power amp. No, yeah. no. But just, yeah, just, just in case. as a comparison. Yeah. yeah, as a comparison. Now, because, because of that, I'm going to run into it as we would as a normal human. Uh -huh. So I'm going to run into the preamp normally. So I've got the uh, the clean channel running, running on number eight on the gain, um, and then the, the the master currently is sitting at half, so we're running like that. change the EQ like we did with the other ones. We're going to boost the, uh, the bass and the treble. I'm going to roll back the middle. And I'm going to boost the middle and drop back the bass. Loud enough, 
Good. That was three quarters of volume. Okay. I may be a little biased here. I think you might be. But that's the only one that sounded like an amp, because it is an amp. Really? Yeah. yeah I think I prefer to see more Duncan sound. Yeah. To from me, in. just like from there, all of the EQ adjustments sounded musical and guitar-like, mm. and the there was breakup, but it's it's natural yeah. breakup. Yeah, that it's true, not yeah. like a not like a distortion, mm -hmm. not like a digital distortion. Okay. But I don't think it's a fair comparison to no, be honest. It's not, no, but so if if you you know if you were running it just straight into the effects loop, mm -hmm. um, I would say there's not much in it between no. the Seymour running flat and the and the Blue running flat. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Yeah. Um, okay, so out of all three though, I would say like the 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 Moor now falls behind because it's it's not it's very it's covering the sound In terms of volume. Not. In terms of volume, no. No, but it colours the sound a lot. Yeah, maybe. You can't get those, that you, like, you, you could hear the helix, you could hear the effects through yeah. the Seymour and the Blue, but they started to get really muddy uh -huh. through the Moor. So if you were looking for a power amp to run with your helix, which, okay, if I was looking for a, mm. which one would you recommend? To run with the Helix, yeah. I would just get the Seymour Duncan, yeah, probably. Okay. Um, and again, not, not actually not even necessarily the the main the main one for me would be being able to tune the power amp to a certain extent to the room yeah. i think that's really important that's how i'd yeah. use it i leave the eq on the helix the same and then when i go into the room i'd, I'd tune the uh, power amp to the to the actual venue so so a really unscientific test today yeah completely useless uh, probably we'll try and sort of intersperse some stills of which cab and which uh, mm -hmm. which setting we were using for each time um, but basically you get a bit of an idea and you can look back at the uh, decibel meter and get a sense of how loud yep. it is the point is all three of those amps easily loud enough to gig with i would say with one one by 12 as well yeah even running one 12 inch speaker so yeah so now what i'd like to do as we've got a little bit of yeah. time, um, is I'd like to run the Seymour through the Helix, as that's kind of like our pick for the Helix power amp. That's really what the test is, uh, into the different cabs, and we'll just have a comparison on how they sound with everything the same. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. First of all, one one by twelve. Um, this, the Seymour's running flat and at three quarters volume. Down on the Seymour, then um, it was just it was just unnecessarily loud. So it's now on uh, three quarters volume. Sorry, see, I would two thirds I, volume. I would be tempted to attenuate between the Helix and the Seymour. I would probably bring the Helix down. Yeah, okay. Bring Seymour up. So that was the 4x12, right? No, that was the 1x12. The okay. blue 1x12 running on its own. Now I'm going to run it in series. Now I'm going to do the 2 by 12 No, I'll do it in, um, I'll just run it in parallel, these two speakers in parallel. So the two blue speakers, now in parallel, all the other settings are the same.
Now we're going to go into the uh, 2x12. This is running um, lane speakers. 8 ohms, 200 watts. Mono. Um, Sounds pretty good to me, actually. That Sounds one. nice. So it's got a rounder sound to it. Yeah. Um, that the uh, the two blues are closed back, um, and that's a semi-open back. So we're now running into a. 8 ohm vintage 30 in a semi open back um, pint cabinet. I think that's pint. The 1x12 vintage 30 at 8 ohms. Okay, now I'll run into the 4x12. This is 200 watts um, at 16 ohms. At this moment, unknown but a cheap amp, uh, cheap, cheap cabinet. Okay, so um, summing up on the speakers there, what's your favourite? Okay, if I had to choose the speakers running in that configuration, I would opt first for the Vintage 30 uh, in the 1x12 cabinet, second for the Laney's in the 2x12 cabinet, third for the uh, Blue's, and then the 4x12 comes a sort of distant fourth, but it wasn't yeah. that bad, that's just a practical thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'd probably say the yeah the same actually in terms of sound quality in terms of taking out practice that two by twelve is a beast to carry around so I'm not going to do that so I'd either take the one by twelve um, vintage thirty in single cab or actually I'd probably take the two um, blues running in parallel so I can get some separation on the stage uh, get some distance there um, yeah That's at the good. moment that is how I run it really is I have the blue amp one. Um, and I either push a, a 1x12 or a 2x12 if it's a larger stage. So, so that's it, pretty much. Is that what you gig out of all of the kit we've got here? If you had to go away and gig something and grab what you've got here, what would you take? Uh, it depends on the gig, but j like right now, I would take the uh, Blue Amp 1 and the Vintage 30. Okay. Yeah. In the, in the 1x12, yeah. I'd take the Helix, the Seymour, and the two Blue cabinets just for portability because they, they all sound good and I, I gig any of it um, but I prefer not to take the 4x12. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good. Good work. I hope this was useful. Um, yeah. Catch you later. Oh, next week um, NAM's coming up as well which is exciting and I'm away. I'm not a NAM unfortunately. Um, we're not at that level yet. Hope maybe next year. That'd be good. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll try and do a catch up like a brief podcast on all our favourite crazy things from NAM. Um, Catch you later. Nice one.